Hi everybody, good morning. It is happy Sunday. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> so um, this last week it's been pretty crazy with my hormones being affected by new variants in the environment. And of course my dog and my husband and other people on Facebook have corroborated to the fact so it's not just me. And I think I finally got my period, which is great. That is the washing away of the old and bringing in the new. So that would make sense as well. Um, though the whole point of the Jilly Juice protocol, right, was to reverse my PMS, which it has in a lot of ways. But uh, I would say this, that my evolution evolutionary symptoms right before my period are only as aggressive as the virus that's upgrading me. And so at this point, it's like, okay, I'm still getting like those symptoms, but now I understand them. And now I don't get the major um, behavioral ups and downs as far as just my feelings and stuff like I used to, like depression and anxiety. I mean, I feel a little anxiety, but I just eat food and that's it. And I took, I go to sleep, which I did too before, but before my life wasn't set up to deal with something like that. So it really got in the way of my life. So anyways, um, my life has set up for allowing evolution to happen. And that's kind of the whole gist of the J-Juice is to understand that your body has to go through these evolutionary symptoms in this dynamic environment, especially now. So anyways, um, so while I, and I was really, so then yesterday, okay, I was really freaking tired. Like it wasn't just like, okay, I'm tired, take a nap and get up and everything is great. No, I was so tired. I was dragging, like seriously dragging. I didn't want to make dinner. I just made like spaghetti and cheese and um, tomato sauce for myself and my husband. And so, um, and so anyway, so that was the extent of it. And I had some leftovers, chicken wings and Jojo's, which are potato wedges. And that was it. And, and so anyway, so I went to bed early. I was like, I'm going to bed. I'm not dealing with nothing. And so yesterday, um, while I was just kind of just being tired on the couch, I was watching Paradise which is that documentary on Netflix um, about that fire that happened a couple years ago. And I knew people, actually, there's people on my Facebook that were victims of paradise. And it was just listening to them say the word fires, and I'm talking about viruses, it almost sounds the same. So when you saw me put down on my Facebook, fires, virus, 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 uh, they sound kind of very similar, if not the same, if at all, they are the same. And I'm just like, oh, and then for whatever reason, so after watching that, I'm thinking like, wow, that was a very interesting documentary. And there's poor people in paradise. And I know somebody who used to live there now moved to Mich or Mich or yeah, no, St. Louis, uh, Missouri. So, okay. They're living out of their little, um, mobile home. And so, okay, that's, that's great. And then I'm, I, I come upstairs and I'm just sitting and watching stuff and trying to pick out some, I tried to watch Joe versus Volcano, but my system doesn't download that stuff very well. So I'm just like, all right, whatever. But, um, I did watch a documentary on Netflix about volcanoes and the people that take pictures of volcanoes and the interviews with people like out there in Indonesia that of the tribes, the indigenous tribes that are not so indigenous that they can't handle Western people. Because yeah, there's this uh, scientist Oppenheimer who is out of Cambridge. He was interviewing um, a chief of a tribe and they do a lot of rituals out there in Indonesia in the deep forest of these very aggressive volcanoes. And, um, and I've been to Kilauea over there in Hawaii. I've been to the Hawaiian volcanoes a long time ago. But they do, they go up to the, the caldera, the crater, I mean, the, the chief of the tribe. And they've seen, like he says, he's seen spirits. He's seen like people cooking, like inside the caldera, in the lava. Now, some of these pictures of the lava, the lava flow 
are so amazing. Like it is just like watching it's it's like watching something so unreal and it's very hot obviously. Um some scientists of the past were killed because of the pyroclastic flows, the gases that were tumbling down the mountain. Um I mean you've heard of Pompeii and stuff. So the so then I'm like and so then I was also writing stuff about viruses and that's what had me think about viruses and fire and looking up the sun because I'm thinking okay so this guy sees spirits inside the volcano and it produces heat and I'm thinking okay viruses fire holy crap okay there's a connection there and then I'm writing about viruses now I'm on to the next section I'm done with the immortality at least explaining the introduction to immortality and the roadblocks to it in my book. So I'm in the next section about introducing viruses and panspermia because panspermia is next. This is what seeded our world is the panspermia um, uh, viruses that are hitching on the back of uh, vectors that are penetrating our universe, our atmosphere, and then seeding life on this planet. But what gave the momentum for these vectors? Well, you have to have some kind of combustion, some kind of um, nuclear fusion, fission, whatever that's happening. And that's the sun. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, the Incas, the sun worship. People worship the sun all the time. Well, OK, well, maybe because from my point of view, just from going to school, the very superficial belief of why they worship the sun was the crops. OK, and the weather. You know, they do the rain dances and they want to make sure they get the, the sun to, to, to grow the crops, photosynthesis, and the rain to water the crops. So that was my extent of understanding why they worship the sun so much. But then there's another part of it, another aspect of worship, sun worshiping, and that is that the sun, yes, has the helium and the and the hydrogen explosions, but it also has iron ore at the core of it. And so it's like at 3% of the sun's heart is iron ore. And it's like, is it three or four times the mass of the earth, the ore or the metal, um, the metal uh, ball or the, the metal core. And so I'm thinking, okay, so what's a virus? The virus has DNA. It has capsids. Viruses have energy too. They have transducers. They also are detectable in biotech when they do viral assays. Assays. A-S-S-A-Y-S. -S -S. And what's a viral assay? Well, what's an assay? Assay is where you put a solution on top of another, of a, of a, of a bacteria or of another solution that has a bacteria in it. And then the assay is the metal that is showing itself. It is the, the, the metallurgy. It is um, being exposed in specific solutions, like you can see it through a microscope. And so, oh, viral assays, metallurgy. Okay, and then I'm thinking like, how does, where do these viruses come from? Because they just don't, if you don't have the sun, you wouldn't have life. Viruses are life, okay? Viruses cannot cannot exist without some kind of light, life, energy, um, biodiversity. They have to be inhabiting things. Well, the sun is the hugest energy ball in the sky. And then when I'm feeling viral transducers come through me in an invisible way because you can't see the, the viruses, the microscopic viruses, they do produce energy. They produce little explosions. They produce so much energy that my dog was going around in circles in my house, like, oh my God. And I'm like, just like scrubbing carpets and doing things like, you know, like, like I was on freaking crack the last couple of days. <laughs> And so I'm like, oh, okay, so viruses are hitching on the back of something. They're being, when, when the sun explodes, it sends off the viral transducers. It sends off the, 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 the intelligence and it's looking to seed life. And yes, planets form, stars form. And so that's the whole, the big bang is the sun is what caused it because the sun is always sending off solar flares. Even they send off electromagnetic radiation, which you really can't see, and there's photons, and those photons are 
messengers of light, and then they do hold percentages, very small percentage of iron ore. Well, that small percentage in microscopic form is the intelligence. And so imagine that getting on the back of a comet or an asteroid or, you know, a spaceship, you know, I mean, or just, you know, a solar flare reaching atmospheres of different planetary systems. And then that's the panspermia. The Big Bang. The Big Bang happens, like, just watch the sun. That's the Big Bang. I mean, the Big Bang isn't just one event. I mean, yes, we're going to call Earth being, or Earth or the universe. Where did the sun come from? I don't know. But what would cause a big energy ball when there's nothing? It's just, it's always been there. Well, it's the sun is a star. Where do these stars come from? Oh, hell, I don't know. So all of these different, I mean, we'll go back to where the stars come from, but there is something out there that caused the stars to form and exist and go through its life cycle of red dwarf, white dwarf, yellow dwarf. And that's where I went through the whole dwarf stuff. So I'm going to go back to some of those notes and look at how I positioned um, the, the birth of a star and all of that. And then our sun is like you, like it's not... It's not red and it's not white. It's like it's in its orange phase. And so all stars have intelligence. Okay, black holes have maybe lack of intelligence. So there is intelligence all over the universe. And then what are the positive and negatives? And this is where the mRNA and the SSRNA, the single-stranded RNA, which is the monocytes. That's what I posted about the viruses. The monocytes are the ones that give life. They're the intelligence. They're from the sun, right? And the uh, mRNA are the messenger RNA. There's the one. They're the ones that are the uh, what's in the therapeutics. They're the ones that do a search and destroy. They. It's like a macrophage or like a natural killer cell with a few slight variations. Okay, but they're in the same family as the natural killer cells and the macrophage. So you have macrophages or monocytes and they are the SSRNA, the single-stranded DNA or RNA. Yeah, RNA. And then you have another uh, layer of it, which is the search and destroy, the ones that enforce the code enforcement to take away. Okay, so that way your arm doesn't go like 10 feet long and has the limitations of your blueprint. And so that's what everyone's fighting against in the vector therapeutics is the fact that there's these mRNA type of constituents in the vectors. And yeah, if you are afraid of pain and you are not maximizing the food supply, yes, you are being attacked at the micro level because you've been taught not to deal with pain. And many of you, if not all of you, have issues with processing food. And so, yeah, you're kind of under a ballistic attack, you know, when it comes to not only what's out there, because what's out there as far as the spores from the new virus that does have Agnes antibodies, but it's being mixed with those that have also the mRNA constituents from the virus or from the therapeutics. And so you're still getting an equal amounts of both just relative to your exposure because you're in an environment that has all of the agonist antibody programming, viral programming, and you're also in an environment with people who are, have specific codes to their body and also other bioengineered type of stuff, which is all natural. And so then your body must be able to differentiate and mediate between those two messages. And so your viral blueprint and footprint should be very, very strong so it's able to take in what it needs and release the excess. And so that's the thing. So that's the pluses and minuses of the universe. That's the positive and negatives. That's the whole binary code, the ones and the twos, or the ones and the twos, or the zeros and the ones, well, not ones and twos, the zeros and the ones, or the pluses and minuses, all the different uh, binary arguments. I'm not going to say dualistic arguments, binary arguments, okay, pro and for, and, or pro and anti and all that stuff. It's all physics. It's about little explosions all over the place causing evolution. Okay. And so that's why we're going to be receiving um, the refugees from Afghanistan, because we're going to have a human 
experimentation of seeing how you put two different viral entities that were compartmentalized because we didn't hang out in Afghanistan except for our soldiers, but they had all their different vectors to be able to handle it. So now we're going to bring everyone that's over there who knows what they're holding on to. And they're going to come over to here to America and we're going to see little mini evolutionary explosions. And you just must figure out how to deal with that evolutionary energy. And so that's the pluses and minuses. See, everything can be categorized and um, understood through positive and negative doesn't mean that it's like literally positive and literally negative because positive and negative is all still when you think about it on a theoretical level it's very relative to your perception of what good and bad is positive and negative but when you position arguments that have very conflicting ideologies or cultures that have conflicting ideologies or belief systems with conflicting ideologies, they can both be construed as positive and negative. And when you put them together, they don't always seem to want to conjoin right away. They have, there has to be a period of like fireworks and then finally an understanding. And that understanding is adaptation. Okay. And that's what right now our society is going through is some people are not willing to adapt. They're not willing to understand anything. And so they're always going to be fighting, resisting, causing little explosions of which the system, those that are, have caused this all right, so to speak, are going to then put the kibosh on all of those little explosions, people who cannot adapt. And so the whole point of the Julius mentality is to understand that, yes, you are, are doing the salt because salt is both positive and negative, though it is an, it's a positive cat ion cation okay but it can have not say a negative effect but it has a curative effect okay so so salt isn't a negative element like like iron and ore and all the different metals they're negative elements salt is an equalizing force salt is the cure of the universe salt is the cure and it also is the one that you uh, is a catalyst to evolution and so that's the power of salt. But when you're in a cured state and you're not evolving, you're not going to live. You'll just be in a cured state and then eventually you know, your vital organs will shut down. So you have to understand salt in a way that, that makes sense. You open up the ionic gates, you do the retroactive evolution with the salt and the J juice, and then you highly salt your food. You eat a high sodium diet because all that food is going to help keep you in a cured but evolving state. How can you be cured and evolving? Well, parts of your body will be cured, other parts will evolve and help transition and adapt to the new environment as it changes. And you will still eat salt, you'll still feel the pain. You won't be doing J-juice really anymore once you understand evolutionary symptoms and you can deal with it and know you'll survive it. And then all this energy out there, you're going to harness to your benefit. You're going to take on information that is not going to be resistance and going to be negatively, you know, destructive to your friends and family and your community. You're going to find ways to improve and progress, not only yourself, but the world around you. But that means that you've got to deal with your shit, literally and figuratively, you've got to deal with your shit. And so, and so the whole thing with the sun is that, yeah, it's like volcanoes, the sun and the volcanoes both give the atmosphere for biodiversity to live and um, and so if you know the sun can also destroy a host so you know when I looked up can UV rays destroy a virus well you can't destroy a virus okay a virus is part of the photonic world of the sun but it can destroy the host and so once that host is destroyed, that virus is set free to go and find it's like a spirit. Like I said, there are very, very malevolent spirits out there that had, that was hosted by a very unbalanced person who did horrible things. And so that's where you have the incubus and the succubus, or then you have the, the Jesus and Allah and, um, I don't know, Moses or something, or they're looking for the Messiah still. The Messiah is you. I'm going to give this all to my Jewish friends. You're still looking for a Messiah? You are the Messiah. If I can have any kind of takeaway from my upbringing as far as the Jewish religion, I am my own savior. And, and what I do, I will shed 
to the community and let people take on the same information and feel, figure it out for themselves. But, um, but yeah, the spirit, the virus is the spirit. It is what inhabits people. It's what gives them life. The microphages are the monocytes that what gives you life and the macrophages are what takes it away. That's the devil and that's the angel. If you want to put it that way, it's not that it's bad. It's just one gives and one takes away. Like when a mother says, I gave you life and I could take it away. You're like, oh my God, I never liked that term, but I know where it comes from. Mama says she's God. Okay. Mama's God for a minute, but mama not be God for a while after the child grows up and has its own mind. <laughs> and now mama has to be the one to learn if she isn't evolving. And so I get it now. I get the bigger freaking picture. So that's how I'm going to have to position the virus and panspermia and it taking over and inhabiting and controlling the microbiome. Viruses control other viruses, parasites, protozoa, protein, fungus, and bacteria. You know, you hear about bacteriophages, mycophages. Very rare to hear about parasites being inhabited by another virus, but they are. But you don't hear about it like in the body. But when they say, yeah, when a virus gets inhabited by another, like, I'm sorry, when a parasite gets inhabited by a virus, it already has. But when another virus takes over a parasite, that's when or another parasite takes over a parasite. That's when another virus you know, takes over another parasite. It's when a parasite gets invaded. But you don't hear too much about that because that's, if that's, if anything, it would be in Monsters Inside of Me, that show on, uh, what is it? I forget. It's, uh, it's on a channel, the Learning Channel or something. TLC, that's right. So that's, so viruses are the gods. I figured it out. I figured out the sun is what holds all the intelligence. The sun and the volcano. So you have two sides of each end. The volcano is what is like the guardian of the earth. They're the intelligence of the earth. They what they what destroys the dinosaurs and creates a new atmosphere for the mammals. Then you have the panspermia from the sun and all the asteroids bringing in all the different intelligence. And then the volcano and the sun, they work together. Then you have the fire that sets, that resets. And there was, there's the whole Greek gods for you. You know, the god of fire, the god of this, the god of that. Holy crap. Now I want to go smoke a cigarette with all that. That's some amazing shiz, okay? So that's my Sunday morning sermon. It's the fact that I understand why the Incas worshipped the sun. Now, as far as human sacrifice, eh, we're not... Here's the thing. There's probably places that still do it where the person is against the person's will and you're like, ugh, I can't watch it. I see it on horror movies and stuff. But <sighs> but as far as human sacrifice, that is a choice now. Now you're going to see it where we have given the Afghans 20 years to figure out how to fight for their country. Now America says, okay, we've given you 20 years. We've given you a choice. We've uprooted and now that country's in chaos. We gave them 20 years. You have been given four years to figure out JJ's. You've been given your whole life to figure out that you need the four food groups and you need the meat, the milk, the cheese, the eggs, pasta, carbs. You've been given all the information. You've been given the inserts. You've been given the back of the bottle. You've been given Dr. Phil. You've been given every freaking warning in the book. So human sacrifice now is a choice. Before in the Inca times when they were doing the stuff like Indiana Jones, it wasn't a choice for certain people. Now there's some people, now I'm sure there's stuff underground, even in American society that does things, but I can't substantiate. I can only speculate. But, um, but now, you know, in mainstream society, human sacrifice is a choice because again, you've been given all the information. And if you still think that salt's poison and you think that pain is a horrible thing, you're going to die from pain and you don't understand the uh, ionic and covalent bonding of cells and of keeping a very um, proportional size. If you don't understand that and you choose not to, despite all the information, then you've chosen to sacrifice yourself for your mom, your dad, your your kids, your sister, your brother. And so human sacrifice is also part of the sun worship because it's still balance on this earth. 
yes, man can go in and manipulate a little bit as as far as causing reproduction. Because you can see man controlling mice. If you don't, if mice have no natural enemy, then they're going to reproduce, reproduce, reproduce. Well, what's the natural enemy of a mouse? It's a cat. What? So you have humans that are reproducing, reproducing, reproducing. What's the natural enemy of a human? It's a virus on ignorance. You hear my dog coughing in the morning? She coughs in the morning. Just like I blow my nose. She goes through her stuff, so do I. Sometimes through that coughing, she'll have a seizure because of the viral entity. But so you have to understand that human sacrifice is just basically balance. But now we don't want human sacrifice to be like what you see on, on the movies because that's pretty intense. So now you get the nicer version of human sacrifice, which is you're choosing to sacrifice yourself despite all the evidence out there. And so now, yeah, you have a choice. And we are faced, now we're going to be facing some pretty heavy atmosphere politically and physio physiologically, <laughs> physiologically, because these viruses are going to be insane. You okay, Shogi? You okay, Shogi? You okay, Shogi? You might pee the bed tonight. All right, you guys have a good Sunday. I'm going to go drink some coffee and, and think about, wow, such revelations. All right. Oh, and also, too, people are getting tumors. They're getting operation taking tumors out. Someone just informed my husband yesterday that somebody had a tumor taken out of their colon. Um, other people had operations and having tumors taken out. Other people probably have are, are fighting tumors and they're not wanting to deal with it. And here's what I say. Those tumors come from the viral introduction of this new environment. And so just taking a tumor out, yeah, might buy you some time. But you still hold that residual programming of your body's at a deficit. And these viruses are going to be relentless. And so you got to do the you got to do the juice. You okay, Shogi? All right, you got to do the J juice and feel the pain and eat the food supply or else I don't see you guys really. I don't know. This is going to be insane. But I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, if you are fighting cancer, disease, chronic illness and tumors and you haven't reset your body and dealt with the pain of eating the food supply, all the food supply, the environment's only going to get more aggressive. And I don't hold out a lot of hope for those that are dealing and fighting with stuff because your body is depleting and that kind of sucks. All right. Bye.